Well, 10 Democratic presidential candidates gathered in New York last night for a marathon session of town halls focused on climate change. 2020 hopefuls took the stage one at a time for more than seven hours, and the event came just weeks after the Democratic National Committee voted not to hold a debate dedicated solely to climate change. During his forum, former Vice President Joe Biden was questioned about a report that he's attending a fundraiser co-hosted by the founder of a natural gas company. Here's a clip. Now, I know that you signed the No Fossil Fuel Money Pledge, but I have to ask, how can we trust you to hold these corporations and executives accountable for their crimes against humanity when we know that tomorrow you are holding a high-dollar fundraiser hosted by Andrew Goldman, a fossil fuel executive? He is not a fossil fuel executive, I'm told. He, he, he is not a fossil fuel executive. Was, if you're going to a fundraiser that's given in part by this guy who has a company that is... Uh, pulling up natural gas, are you the right guy to go after this? Well, I didn't realize he does that. I was told, if you look at the SEC filings, he's not listed as one of those executives. So, what I was that. told by my staff is that he did not have any responsibility relating to the company. He was not on the board. He was not involved at all in the operation of the company at all. And But if that turns out to be true, then I will not in any way accept his help. But Biden's senior advisor pushed back, tweeting that Andrew Goldman is not a fossil fuel executive. She argues that he's not involved in day-to-day -day operation and is not on the board of the company either. And she also said that Biden has not violated his pledge to not take money from fossil fuel executives. To the best of our knowledge, Biden is still scheduled to attend the fundraiser later today. Well, joining me now is Matthias Lehman. He's the digital director for the Sunrise Movement. That is an activist network advocating for the Green New Deal. So, Matthias, you know, that man who asked Joe Biden that question, you know, about the fundraiser is actually a member of the Sunrise Movement's Chicago chapter. So what do you make of what he said? Well, look, this is about our priorities and about money in politics. We've known about climate change for decades. Politicians have talked about climate change for decades. What has kept them from action? Like, and I hate to be crass here, but there's a reason that the fossil fuel industry has spent millions on political campaigns on both sides of the aisle. These large profit margins drive corporations to operate in gray moral spaces. And so this quibbling about whether or not he's an executive or he's a co-founder uh, of this organization, and that should be troubling enough when executives in this industry have spent millions making their own fake pseudoscience to sow down about climate change for decades now. So, Matthias, it's clear you guys aren't happy with Biden's answer here. Are you guys going to push back? How do you push back against something like this that Biden said? Are you going to put the pressure on him? Uh, I mean, obviously, we're, we're going to put pressure on every candidate who does break the no fossil fuel money pledge, whether they do so intentionally, whether it's a gray area. This is a hard line. We need our politicians to stand with the people and not with corporations. I want to ask you, talk to you sort of about the next two highest polling candidates. You've got Bernie Sanders, you've got Elizabeth Warren. We saw a few differences in their policies last night. I want to first talk to you about the public ownership of energy companies. Bernie Sanders wants a government to take over local and state utilities. Elizabeth Warren does not. Is there a distinction that you find um, between either of those? And, and who do you side with? Who does your organization side with? Uh, well, we have not made an endorsement yet, and we don't plan on making an endorsement anytime soon. Uh, what I will say about that specific issue is that large enough profit margins, like I said, drive corporations to operate in gray moral spaces, whether that's uh, discrimination against African American housing, whether that is the financial speculation that drove the 2008 crisis, uh, whether it's uh, 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 medical care being gouged up in prices and driving people into bankruptcy. So when you look at all these vital services and having a planet in the next couple of decades is a pretty vital service in my opinion. I don't think people who are prioritizing profit can be trusted to make the decisions here. And so if we do need to take some public ownership or regulation of of um, the industries that provide that power, that's kind of what the people need. So when you look back and you step back at everything that we watched yesterday on climate change, whose position really stands out to you? I think what really stands out to me is how much the conversation has changed in even the last three years. In what way? In all, in all of the 2016 primary, there was one vaguely climate-related question. It was about con con uh, conservation, and it came from Ken Bone, you know, the famous sweater guy. One question 
Uh, climate change was also mentioned one other time, which was when the moderator asked during the debate what the single greatest national security threat to America was. And Bernie Sanders said, climate change. That's it. Those were the two mentions of climate change during the entire 2016 primary. As you mentioned, we just had a seven hour discussion on the topic. And so the conversation is clearly changing. And, and for us, that's the big takeaway. This is an issue that people weren't talking about. That is an existential crisis for humanity. And now it is front and center in this campaign and in this election. You talk about front and center. I want to ask you about another issue on climate change. Candidates were also asked about their views on meat consumption after last month's United Nations report that the world would benefit if people were changing the way they eat, you know, going greener, more plant based. What do you make of the line of questioning and the candidates response to that? I, it really feels like a red herring. It's a way to talk about the issue and dismiss it. So let's let's talk about the reality of the situation. If we hit, say, like the three degree benchmark, we're going to have about 20 percent of the arable land that we have now on this planet left. So if we don't do something about climate change, nobody's going to be eating meat. And we won't have the, enough land to sustain a meat eating population for humanity. That, that's, that's thing number one. Number two, this is not about people's individual choices. The, most of the pollution comes from corporations. Most of the carbon emissions come from corporations and not people's uh, like personal decisions. And so what, what we need to do is put pressure on the supply side for more efficient and for eventually zero emission uh, cars, buildings, food production, et cetera. This is a production side problem, not a consumption side problem. Matthias Lehman, thank you so much for joining us, Matthias. Thank you.